Okay, folks, here we have my Thingomatic by MakerBot. I bought this contraption probably about a little over two years ago when 3D printers started coming on the scene. There was a previous model called a Cupcake, and it was pretty small and pretty experimental. This one was, in my hopes, going to be a much more reliable one, and that didn't prove to be the case. I had a lot of trouble with the extruder on it. And played with it for probably about a month or so, two years ago, and decided to give up on it for a while. And the biggest problem I had was with the extruder and the plastic not coming out appropriately. Well, <clears throat> these things are pretty finicky, and there's a pretty much a huge following of people that modify these and print out their own parts and so on. And uh, somebody had come up with was a spring-loaded extruder. The design from MakerBot, the Mark 7 print extruder, had just a Delrin rod or pin that basically pushed against the filament, but it was not reactive at all. And it would run for a while and then jam up and you'd swear at the printer and walk away in frustration. Well, with this new one, this is a new design. I bought this off of eBay. You can see there's a spring right there. And that spring creates tension between the gear drive and the plastic. So it reacts basically to varying widths of the plastic rod. So it becomes much more reliable. Basically what we have here is just a stepper motor, a heated block, down here underneath there and the actual extruder and there is about a four millimeter or 0.4 millimeter hole that the plastic squirts out from. What I'm printing here is a spooler bracket and it's going around the perimeter right now and you'll notice the sound is a lot different. It just changed over to doing an infill. And I'm doing a 20% fill. It's kind of hard to get the camera in there to get a good view of it because of the nature of it. As it gets to the back side, we can see a little more. You can see a pattern starting there. So instead of filling this in completely with solid plastic, you don't really need that for this type of bracket. It's filling in and filling about 20% of the volume with plastic rod. Now there's a lot more material below the actual bracket that is called a raft. And that raft is used to stick the plastic down to the heated plate. And it took, it took about 15 minutes just to start that raft at the bottom. And it's detecting or calibrating it or predicting that it's going to take about five hours to do this part. So these aren't exactly fast machines, but it's a lot cheaper than spending about, well, I don't know, between five and maybe thirty thousand dollars to take and have this done with an injection molding machine. If you only need one off of something or you want to download the part off of the internet it's a lot more cost effective to do this and it's probably going to be about maybe a dollar's worth of plastic when this is done maybe dollar fifty you'd be surprised you see there we're printing at 220 degrees Celsius and we're maintaining a hundred degree bed with a, the ABS that this is printing with you want to keep the bed warm so it doesn't curl because the plastic will want to shrink up as it cools. So you try to keep it somewhat warm so it doesn't print. And this is, I think there's about a four and a half inch by four and a half inch cube you could build with one of these machines. Um, not, the, not the biggest or fastest machine, but to uh, dabble in the 3D printing market, it, uh, not a bad thing at all. Trying to see. 
And this is using the latest firmware that I downloaded um, from the internet um, that has acceleration. So this actually is maybe twice as fast as what this machine did out of the box as far as printing. And so far what you see there, it's been printing for probably close to 45 minutes maybe. Thing 6% complete, 33 minutes. The problem is it's very mesmerizing to watch, and you can burn up a lot of time just watching the stupid thing run. Anyway, neat little gadget.